two common forms of AC power provided to data centers are single phase and three phase power. Single phase power has only one basic power waveform, while three phase power has three basic power waveforms that are offset from each other by 120 degrees. When AC power comes into a building as a single voltage source, it is referred to as single phase. If the power comes into the building utilizing three voltage sources or three phases, or three hot wires with accompanying neutrals and grounds, it is referred to as three phase power. Single phase electricity is usually distributed to residential and small commercial customers. The single phase implies that power comes in with only one hot wire along with the accompanying neutral and ground. Generating and distributing three phase power is more economical than distributing single phase power. Since the size of the wire affects the amount of current that can pass, it also determines the amount of power that can be delivered. If a large amount of power were distributed as a single phase, huge, heavy transmission wires would be needed and it would be nearly impossible to suspend them from a pole. It is much more economical to distribute AC power using three phase voltage sources. Now, let's talk about 120, 240, and 208 volt configurations. 120 volts and 240 volts AC are the most common single phase voltages supplied to residential customers. Single phase 240 volts tends to supply larger domestic appliances such as clothes dryers, electric cooking stoves, and water heaters. Single phase 120 volts is also available in some data centers. Many IT devices, including computer monitors and individual desktop computers, accept 120 volts. Three-phase 208 volts power usually supports commercial environments, including most data centers. Next, we'll explore the concept of watts and volt amps. The watt measures the real power drawn by the load equipment and is used as a measurement of both power and heat generated by the equipment. Wattage rating is typically stamped on the nameplate of the load equipment. However, the nameplate rating is rarely the same as the measured wattage in IT equipment. Many data centers have metering available on UPS or power distribution units or even on rack mounted power strips, all of which allow accurate recording of power at the site. The volt amps rating, or apparent power, represents the maximum load that the device in question can draw. It is the product of the applied AC voltage times the current drawn by the device. VA is used in sizing and specifying wire sizes, circuit breakers, switch gear, transformers, and general power distribution equipment. VA ratings represent the maximum power capable of being drawn by the equipment. VA ratings are always greater than or equal to the watt rating of the equipment. The significance of the difference between watts and volt amps is that power supplies, wiring, and circuit breakers may need to be rated to handle more current and more power than what may be expected. The terms watts and volt amps are often used interchangeably when discussing load sizing for power infrastructure components such as UPS devices. These terms are, however, not the same. The key to understanding the relationship between watts and VA is the power factor. Watts represent real power and volt amps represent apparent power. The power factor is the ratio of real power to apparent power. Power factor can be expressed as a number between 0 and 1 or as a percentage. If a given UPS has a watts rating of 8 and a VA rating of 10, then its power factor is 0.8 or 80%. 
a UPS with a power factor of 0.8 is more efficient than a UPS with a power factor of 0.7. Next, we will look at one type of electronic switching power supply, power factor corrected. Power factor corrected power supplies were introduced in the mid-1990s and have the characteristic that Watt and VA ratings are equal. That is, they have a power factor of nearly 1. Power factor correction is simply a method of offsetting inefficiencies created by electrical loads. All large computing equipment such as servers, routers, switches, drive arrays made after 1996 use the power factor corrected power supply. Personal computers, small hubs, and personal computer accessories can have a power factor of less than one. For a small UPS designed for computer loads which only have a VA rating, it is appropriate to assume that the Watt rating of the UPS is 60% of the published VA rating. For larger UPS systems, it is becoming common to focus on the Watt rating of the UPS. State-of-the-art larger UPS systems are rated for unity power factor. In other words, they are designed so that their capacity in KVA is the same as in kilowatts. Next, let's discuss plugs and receptacles. Many different types of power plugs are used throughout the world. Two of the more common plug standards in data centers are the International Electrotechnical Commission standard which is based in Switzerland but used globally, and the National Electric Manufacturers Association standard, which is commonly used in North America. Most plugs in the data center have three prongs, and the receptacles are designed to accept these three-prong configurations. In the U.S., a typical three-prong plug consists of two flat prongs and one rounded prong. The larger of the flat prongs is the neutral, the smaller of the two flat prongs is the hot, and the rounded prong at the bottom is the ground. The most common plug receptacle combination for IT equipment is of an IEC design. These receptacles are often designed in a recessed fashion for safety reasons. The design helps to prevent a person from touching the pins when they are live. Also common are plugs and receptacles of the twist lock variety. The plug is twisted to lock into the receptacle. This is particularly useful if you choose to deploy overhead cabling rather than below the raised floor cabling. With twist lock, the receptacle is less likely to allow gravity and vibration to dislodge it from its plug. Let's discuss IEC and NEMA plugs in greater detail. Among the most common IEC plugs found in the data center are the IEC 320C13 and the IEC 320C14, which are rated over a range from 100 to 240 volts AC and a current of about 10 amps. The IEC 320C19 and the IEC 320C20, which are rated over a range from 100 to 240 volts AC and a current range of about 16 to 20 amps. Also common are the IEC 309 series of 208 volt single phase Russell Stoll connectors. The IEC 309-2P3W, 208 volt 20 amp for example, is rated at 20 amps, and the IEC 309-2P3W, 208 volt 30 amp, is rated at 30 amps. Clues to the makeup of the plug can be determined by analyzing the name of the plug. In the case of the IEC 309-2P-3W, 208 volt 30 amp, for example, the letter P identifies the number of poles, the letter W identifies the number of wires, V identifies volts, and A designates the current in amps. 
Receptacles are installed in rack-mounted power strips as well as on power whips, and those plugs are most commonly attached to power cords on IT equipment. There are many examples of NEMA standard plug types. Each NEMA plug and receptacle type follows a naming convention. For example, a common plug type may read L5-15P. If the code begins with the letter L, the plug or receptacle locks. If the code does not begin with a letter, the plug or receptacle does not lock. In this example, the plug locks. The first number can be a digit between 1 and 24, where 3 and 4 are never used. That number represents a certain combination of voltage, number of poles, number of wires, and whether it is a grounding type plug or not. In this example, the plug is a number 5 plug. The number after the hyphen indicates the amperage rating. In this example, the number after the hyphen is 15, which means the plug is rated to handle 15 amps. The final letter, being a P, indicates that the device is indeed a plug. If the device was a receptacle, the final letter would be an R. Now that we have learned what we need to know about plugs and receptacles, let's explore some of the common areas where power failures can occur. According to M Technology Incorporated, an expert in the field of probabilistic risk assessment, the most common areas of power system failure in data center electrical infrastructure are the power distribution unit and its respective circuit breakers at 30%, all other circuit breakers at 40%, UPS failure at 20%, and balance of the system at 10%. We will now discuss the topic of circuit breakers and their importance in the data center. A circuit breaker is a piece of equipment or a type of switch that is designed to protect electrical equipment from damage caused by overload or short circuit. Circuit breakers are designed to trip at a given current level. Unlike fuses and switches, circuit breakers can be reset. Large circuit breakers have adjustable trip mechanisms, while smaller circuit breakers designed for branch circuits have their trip levels internally preset according to their electrical current rating. As mentioned earlier, in the data center's electrical infrastructure, most failures can be traced back to the circuit breaker. Circuit breakers can fail in a number of ways. Failure to close, failure to open under fault conditions, spurious trip, where a breaker opens with no fault, and failure to operate with the time current specifications of the unit.